Not so long ago, life used to be so predictable, but not anymore. We are living in uncertain times. All over the world, people are facing many challenges that they do not know how to handle. With change taking place at such a rapid pace, it is hard to make sense of things. People are confused. They have no idea what to pursue, what to leave behind, what to fight for, and what to fight against. What if I told you that it is not all doom and gloom? What if I gave you the assurance that you are not lost and alone? My brother and sister, God is right there beside you to guide and protect you. It may not make sense, but let me explain. Often we find security in having everything figured out. What happens when nothing is working anymore and when our plans fall apart? What happens when we do not know how to get from here to there? That could be you experiencing sleepless nights, trying to figure things out with no solution in sight. If you relate, I have good news for you today. God is saying to you, while you are struggling to figure things out, I have already worked them out for you. You have been seeking the voice of God, waiting for Him to say something. He has spoken telling you to quit worrying about things he has already taken care of. You may be wondering why God is not revealing the details of his plan to you if he has already worked them out. I know God promised not to leave us or forsake us. He would always walk with us to complete what he planned for us, but he never promised to show us the A to Z of how he would work things out for us. The assurance we have is that all things work together for those who love God and are called according to His design and purpose. How God is sorting out your challenges may be a mystery to you, but not to Him. Trust Him, His plan, His purpose, and His ways. Isaiah 55, 8 reads, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. Your life is in the hands of him who has proved himself to be faithful and trustworthy countless times in the Bible and in your life. How God weaves both our good and bad experiences into his masterpiece plan is something we may never understand with our limited human thinking. We cannot begin to comprehend the fullness of his divine purposes. The good news is that our lack of understanding will not hinder his plans from getting fulfilled in your life. For instance, if the Israelites had been asked whether they thought they could cross the Red Sea on dry land, I am sure most, if not all, would have said no. We reason and operate based on our natural senses, but God's ways are beyond human comprehension. He is limitless and His capabilities are infinite. He has immense power that we humans cannot even begin to understand. He parted the waters of the Red Sea for the Israelites to cross, yet no one can explain how he did it. No science can and no one will ever be able to. This example demonstrates how fruitless it can be to try and understand the ways of God. Instead of trying to figure it out, let God handle it. Think about it. When we are sick and go to see a doctor, we believe they can cure us. We are confident in their ability to give us the correct diagnosis and the appropriate medication to restore us to health. We never ask for a breakdown or a methodology of how the tests were conducted or the diagnosis. We simply have faith in them. We do not fear receiving the wrong treatment because we believe they are qualified to do their work excellently. If we can trust our doctors, how much more should we trust God? In the same manner, God is capable of handling our life illnesses. His only requirement is that we trust Him. When you question God's plan for your life or have backup plans, you are not trusting God. You are saying that you do not trust God enough to let Him run your life. When you let God work things out for you, you surrender to His will and plans. You must put yourself completely under His guidance and willingly take your hands off the wheel. Whether God takes you through bumpy, smooth, or winding roads, simply let Him lead you and enjoy the ride. He is the one in control. He knows what He is doing and where He is taking you. God will ask you to do things that may seem ridiculous or silly. Obey. Remember what I told you. 
Whatever God starts, He finishes. He is faithful to His promises. Save yourself the torture of trying to figure out your life. Relax, revel in your position as a passenger, being chauffeured to a beautiful destination. He is faithful to His promises. In Judges 7, we are told the story of Gideon and his men who came up against a vast army. Many Israelites came out to fight. I imagine most of them showed up because they felt obligated to fight for their nation rather than for bravery. When Gideon told those afraid to go back, a whopping 22,000 men left. If that was not bad enough, God told Gideon that the men were still too many. The number was further cut down until only 300 soldiers remained. I'm sure Gideon was baffled by the battle plan. How could 300 men go up against a vast enemy army? God commanded Gideon, At this point, when I advise you to, blow the trumpets, break the pots, and let torchlight out of nowhere sparkle out in the night. It will appear as though a huge battalion is encompassing the camp. It will create mass disorientation, and the opposing army will wind up battling one another. Gideon obeyed, and the result was a great victory for Israel. Even if Gideon and his men had not understood God's plan, they obeyed. It pays to trust God. He will always work things out for you. I pray the Lord reminds you that, even though we may not always understand His ways, He can always be trusted to do what is best for us. The one who knows everything holds your destiny. We are conditioned to live worried, uptight, and on edge whenever things are not how they should be. Worry is a killer of joy, contentment, and gratitude. It is a stealer of peace and makes people as unstable as the waters of the sea. Worry is not a godly virtue and should not be a part of God's children. When faced with problems or uncertainty, we tend to be fearful, anxious, and troubled about the future. I do not know which one resonates with you, but I know that God is not glorified when you are worrying. The Bible tells us to keep our eyes fixed on the Lord Jesus and trust that all things will work for our good. Worry is mainly a result of uncertainty. We are unsure if God has heard us or whether he will answer or show up for us. Be assured that God hears you will answer you and show himself strong on your behalf. Luke 12, 22 and 23 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. Life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Throughout scripture, God commands us not to worry or be anxious. He does so because we are responsible for how we feel. If your thoughts are focused on your challenges instead of God's ability and willingness to deliver you, you will be full of anxiety and worry. You cannot be overwhelmed by the issues of life and still live your best life. Feelings of anxiety rob you of your ability to live life to the fullest. Worrying about things with no eternal value robs us of the joy of life. Since God gave you life, He is more than capable to give you all you need to live a godly and contented life. The one who gave you a body is more than able to provide you with clothes, keep you in good health, and protect you from every attack of the enemy. You are very precious to God. Why should you feel that your problems will never be solved? Could it be that you have been relying on yourself to resolve your challenges? Maybe you have been trusting in your understanding, wealth, or connections to save you from your troubles. The only antidote to fear is trusting in the Lord with all your heart and mind and not leaning on your own understanding. If you will trust God, he will smooth out the path ahead of you. If you want to live a fulfilled life, focus on living for God's pleasure and glory, a life sold out to the kingdom of God. The word of God tells us that God is aware of our needs. If he clothes the grass of the field and takes care of the ravens, how much more will he take care of you? The only condition is that you must seek first the kingdom of God and every other thing will be added unto you. The real life of every Christian begins when they start to live for the kingdom of God. Your calling is to follow his plan for your life. I have heard testimonies of believers who said, 
life began to make more sense for them when they decided to seek first the kingdom of God in all their endeavors. Take a look at the Lord Jesus. There was never a trace of worry or anxiety in his life or ministry. None. He is our role model. His life is a perfect example for us. Do you think Jesus worried about what to wear to Nazareth or Samaria? I am very sure he did not. He lived a completely worry-free life because he was sold out to the kingdom of God. His will was to do the will of the Father and glorify him. He knew God was faithful and would never leave or forsake him. Trust God and let your faith in him be unshaken. The more you know him, the more you will realize he is committed to helping you fulfill his will for your life. If you are truly living for God, you have no reason to doubt his word. He will do his part and will not fail you. Psalm 34, 17 says, The righteous cry out and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from all their troubles. God's word stands sure. It has been tested and proven to be true. Who are the righteous that God delivers from all their troubles? If you believe in Jesus Christ, you have been made righteous and God will surely deliver you from all your afflictions. Remember, when Jesus finished speaking to the multitude, he prayed over the only food they had to feed thousands, five loaves of bread and two fishes. God delivered him out of the challenge of feeding multitudes with a limited supply and provided for the crowd. There are numerous examples of God showing up for his people and providing for their needs supernaturally. I am here to tell you to stop worrying. Stop wasting your time and energy on a fruitless exercise. If you cannot even add a single hour to your life or one unit of measure to your height, do you think you can solve your problems by worrying? Cast all your cares on the Lord and stop worrying about what you cannot control or fix. Instead of focusing on your challenges, Focus on doing God's will. Matthew 6.33 instructs us on what should be our priority. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. From today, put first things first. Make God and his kingdom a priority in your life. The kingdom of God is not only about ministry, but includes every aspect of our lives. Our aim should be to seek and strive after his kingdom and his righteousness. When we learn and practice his way of doing and being right, all other things we are worrying about will be given to us. In every circumstance, ask yourself, what would Jesus' response be? Once you have established what he would do from the word, act in line with his example. Walking in the will of God brings peace, satisfaction, and joy. Worry and anxiety cannot coexist with the peace of God. Give your attention to heavenly matters that have eternal value instead of the cares of this world. Worry and anxiety are present when there is pressure to constantly possess more and more material things. Choose to focus on God. In his presence is fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore. As a child of God, you have no reason to have sleepless nights, be apprehensive, or be on edge because your hope is in Christ, the solid rock that cannot be moved. Beloved, it is time to come back to the still waters. It is time to stop living below your life's potential due to feelings of sadness or discontentment. It is time to be grateful for what you have while trusting God to play his part and make all things work together for your good. It is time to live in the love and will of God. Focus on making the most use of every opportunity and resource you have to please God. You will be amazed. You will experience the peace that transcends all understanding instead of depression. Joy instead of sadness. God will turn your mourning into dancing. Psalms 94.19 says, When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought joy to my soul. My prayer for you is that you will find consolation in doing God's will. The world will not make it easy for you to fix your eyes on Jesus, but rest assured, God is your help and strength. You will no longer be fearful or anxious like the world. Hide the word of God in your heart and be careful to do all that is written in it. When you do, every worry and anxiety will flee. Weeping may have endured for the night, 
but it is time for you to rejoice. Arise and shine, for your light has come. Do you constantly see yourself as incapable of doing some things you admire? Or are you always bombarded with so much negativity that you are starting to believe you cannot do great and notable things? God has given us the power, strength, and ability we need to go through life and fulfill our purpose. But we sit still and fold our arms helplessly, watching the devil make a mess of our lives. That should not be. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says, For the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. NIV. Paul wrote this to Timothy, his son. God has given us power. This power enables us to do what we might have thought was impossible. The power of the Holy Spirit is God's ability in believers. The Holy Spirit is living within you. You can achieve whatever you can conceive. Do not allow the lie of the devil to get to you. You are not a little timid toddler. You have a giant living in you. Enough with the beggarly life. Start taking your place and position in Christ. Confront your obstacles with unshaken faith in the ability of God within you. You should not be the one to be afraid of the enemy. You as a child of God should not be the one who is too timid to go out of your comfort zone and maximize your potential. You already have the power you need to surmount everything the devil throws your way. The power that raised Jesus from the dead works in your life. You are weak in yourself when you rely on your own strength. But when you reach down to God, the well of unending strength, you will see yourself doing exploits. Fear sets in when you have not understood what God has embedded in you. You will be like a soldier who goes to the battlefield and faces the enemy in fear, forgetting he has a sword to fight the enemy. God will never allow a situation you cannot handle to come your way. You are facing that challenge because you have what it takes to overcome it. You should not allow the enemy to think he is won. No, you must repossess your victory, pull out your sword, and exercise your authority. Never see yourself as less than who you truly are. Seeing yourself as lesser than what God has made you will limit you in every area. Beloved, you are not a prey. You are not a victim. You are not a failure. You are a child of God. You are not defined by your past. Your mistakes of the past have no place in your future. Do not settle for low self-esteem. Do not settle for the average life. Rise and pursue with vigor. Go become what the Lord wants you to be. You might be wondering about the resources you'll need. Retain this, beloved, that being called a child of God gives you access to every resource of heaven, as long as they are under the custody of God. Do not panic in any situation. You have the ability of the Most High within you. Luke chapter 10 verse 19 says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. NIV. This verse captures Jesus' word to the 70 disciples he sent on a mission. He knew they could not pull anything off with their strength. He therefore gave them the strength they need to confront everything that might challenge them along the way. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Before you were born, he knew you would be born at the time you were born. He knew a time would come when you will need the supernatural ability to subdue life's storms. That was why he prepared everything ahead of time to make sure that you are never stranded. The power you need to subdue the wiles of the devil is in you. You need to know that as long as you are a child of God, you remain untouchable for the devil. If you know this, why are you then afraid? Why do you allow your situation to overwhelm you? Why do you cry to men for help? The devil capitalizes on your fear to torment you. He uses your fear to bring to pass what you are afraid of. Imagine you are about to write an exam. You have prepared and also prayed to God for success. But then there has been a great record of failure in the past and only a few people pass that exam. You then allow that news to throw you off balance and you begin to harbor the thought that you might fail the exam. You keep confessing that you will fail, and then you end up failing. That failure cannot be put on God's account. He has said in his word that he will bless your memory and also bless the work of your hand. But you refuse to use his word to counter the lie of the devil. When you put your trust in the power God has put inside you, you will be able to live in the exact way God wants you to live as a believer. 
If you have not been experiencing the power of God in and around your life, the fault is not from God. He has done his part, and it is left for you also to do your part. You need to reach down to the well of power he has dug in you to manifest power. Fear has plagued your life for so long because you are ignorant of the power dwelling in you. The scripture has been given to know God and his plans for us. Do not read the Bible as a book of history or a story. Read it like God's message to you, because in reality, that is what it is. You will be able to confront any situation that comes your way when the power of God is alive in you. How can the word of God be alive in you? The surest way of having God's word resident in you is by reading, studying, and meditating on the word. Live your life in sync with the word of God. When the Bible says you should not fear, then you should not fear. Whatever it is you read in the Bible is for you to apply to your life. God has said you should not be afraid countless times in the scriptures. You have read it repeatedly. You have also heard countless times that God is with you every step of the way. Then why are you still afraid? Why are you still timid? Timothy was a young man when he was about to start ministering. His father was an unbeliever, but he did not allow that to stop him from ministering powerfully. Following the encouragement that he received from Paul, he went forth and used his gifts powerfully for God. Do not allow anything to stop you. Don't sit in the chair and count a thousand reasons you think it will be impossible for you to achieve something. Step up with faith. Believe in the power of God that lies within you. Overcome the fear, doubt, or anxiety with a strong faith in the never-failing power of God. Isaiah 41.10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. NIV God will help you with whatever you are battling with. Nothing is too hard for him to do. Nothing is impossible with God. Stop limiting God with your situation. The fact that it is hard for you does not mean that the situation is hard for God. What is tough to you is nothing but a walk in the park to God. When the problems, hardships, and difficulties get boisterous, that is not the time to allow fear to get the best of you. It is the time for you to get up in faith and face the storm. Peter and John were on their way to the temple to pray one day in Acts chapter 3 verses 1 through 11. They saw the blind beggar at the gate of the temple. This man had been there for a long time, and they must have seen him countless times. However, on this particular day, something special happened. The beggar looked to them as usual for arms, but they gave him better than he asked for. Peter looked at him and said, Silver or gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Immediately, the man got up and started walking. This was the same Peter that was too timid to acknowledge that he was a disciple of Christ during the trial of Jesus. But something happened. He received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and was no longer timid. Glory to God! Do you also know that you have something within you? You can as well boldly speak to the situation in your life, and it will change immediately. If Peter was afraid, he would not have even attempted that, and he might have robbed that man of receiving his healing. Fear is a strategy from the devil to rob you of your inheritance in Christ. The devil did not want you and the people destined to be blessed through you to receive their blessings. That is why he keeps making you afraid instead of stepping forth to use the power in you. Keep God's word always before you to overcome fear. The secret of overcoming fear is knowing God's word and using that word to confront every situation. Never allow the overwhelming situation of life to make you forget the enormous ability that resides within you. Remember, Jesus raised the dead. That dead and hopeless situation can be transformed by the power of Christ. Maintain a cordial relationship with God through prayer and study of his word. This lifestyle will keep you always aware of the power of God that is at work within you. Whenever life throws you down, you will be able to rise like a victor. Beloved, do not allow anything to make you feel powerless, defeated, or oppressed. Jesus has done enough for us already, and anyone who lives below the provision he made will only shortchange himself. I want you to face life with this confidence henceforth. Know that the power you have in you is greater than anything the enemy can call power. If you know the value of what you have, you will be able to use it properly. Run with this hope and never allow any situation to crush your spirit.
do not allow the fear of the devil to become a stronghold in your life that will keep you from manifesting. Remember that the devil is only feigning like a roaring lion. He is a toothless dog that can only bark. Take the fear away from your heart as you bask in the confidence you have in God's word. Fear torments the soul. That is the handiwork of the devil. You can choose to allow it. However, I admonish you to choose to be who God has called you to be. Are you weak and tired? Are you weary and exhausted from fighting life's battles? I bring you hope and comfort today. God will make you strong. Things may be going sour in your life at the moment. You may have encountered disappointment and hatred wherever you turn. Ordinarily, situations like this will shake you to the very core of your being. This is when most people curse God. It is also when people ask God questions like, God, where are you? Or where were you when I needed you most? If you can truly hear me, why have you not shown up for me? Times like these make it difficult to believe, but God is always faithful. When things are going exactly the way you want them to, God is faithful. When things don't go the way you want, God is still faithful. The faithfulness of God is not tied to your situation or challenges. God is faithful because that is who He is and He will never change. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6, I the Lord do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Also, Numbers chapter 23, verse 19 tells us that God is not human that he should lie, not a human being that he should change his mind. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? So God is unchanging and keeps his promises. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29, he gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. This is God's promise to you, and you can rest assured that He will fulfill it. God's specialty is to give you strength when you are weak. He gives you the strength you need to face anything. You don't have to stay weak due to anything you're facing in life. Always know that God is still in the business of giving strength to the weak. Are you weak? Look to God for strength. Are you tired? Allow God to give you the strength you need to keep moving forward. Are you oppressed and overwhelmed? God has given you victory over that oppression and you'll come out strong. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 31 says, But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. If you're sick, trust in the healing power of God. If you're in need, lack, or want, expect to receive God's provision. Don't ever doubt the power of God in your heart. There is nothing that is beyond the power of God. God can take you from that down state and make you run with new strength. Trust God's ability to save you from whatever situation you find yourself in. If you're weary, draw strength from this promise of God to you. It's normal to get tired after several attempts. It's also human for you to have the urge to give up and try other ways. It's natural for your burdens to overwhelm you. However, if you rely on your strength to see you through, you'll surely faint. Your ability will fail, but God's ability in you will never fail. God's ability is what will give you strength in your weakest moments. No matter what you're going through, God can bring something good out of your life. You're not doomed to destruction. This is not the end of your life. God's words should be your encouragement. God's words should be your source of strength. When things go really bad, your faith is put to the test and you feel like all hope is gone. That's when you need to hold on to God more. You must understand and apply His promises to your life. You have to know the promises of God to you before you can believe and act on them. Take time to study God's promises for your life. Always turn to God for comfort. Do not succumb to the temptation of trying to do things your way. God loves you. He's always there for you. The fact that you can see and feel it or not 
does not change the fact that God is with you and is working everything out in your favor. Your human strength, resolve, or determination will one day come to the point where it's faced with a greater situation. But no situation is greater than God's ability. No predicament is stronger than God can handle. Looking at the Bible, various situations looked hopeless, impossible, and unchangeable. However, when God stepped in, He turned everything around for good. It is God that takes the beggar out of the dunghill and makes him a king. He heals the blind and makes the dumb sing. Believe in the ability of God to change your situation for good. While you wait on Him for a change of circumstance, know that His power is there to make you strong. The strength you need to hold on is available to you. The grace to keep trusting Him in the face of adversity has been made available to you. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. God says you should not be afraid. Fear is of the devil. The devil brings fear so that you won't see what God is doing, and this makes your heart unsettled. When you learn to keep God's word alive in your heart, fear will vanish from you. That's when you'll be able to trust God and His promises concerning your life. Your help is from God. Your breakthrough is in God. The strength you need to go through every difficult time is in God. God has promised, and He won't go back on His word. Psalm chapter 73, verse 26, My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. David acknowledged God as the strength of his life. He knew that his human strength would fail him when he faced real challenges. Many people have shifted their trust from God to other things. They subtly believe that their friends, parents, or even children will be there to save them when the going gets tough. This is a belief that has led a lot of people to great disappointments because only God's help is sure and reliable. The help of a man is vain, transient, and unreliable. When you are confused about what to do, look to God for direction. He will surely direct your footsteps. When you are struggling emotionally, physically, or mentally, God is there to bring you out of the difficult times. All you have to do is believe in Him. Believing in God when everything's going smoothly is not a big deal. You don't need any encouragement to have faith when your bank account is fat. You won't need anyone to assure you of the goodness of God when your business is booming, your children are behaving well, and you have peace in your home. It takes the storm to test if your faith is in God or in the things you have. No matter how hard it is, do not ever stop believing in God. As you go from one situation to the next, even when trouble seems to multiply, your faith should never diminish. God is with you wherever you go. His presence goes with you wherever you go. This assurance should give you confidence that you're protected. Is it possible to have faith in difficult times? Yes. You'll have strength in difficult times when you've mastered the act of building up your faith. Before the challenges get overwhelming, build your faith. The time of ease and convenience is when you need to feed your faith. The challenges may be too fierce for you to start building faith when they come. The fierceness of life's battles won't allow you to start developing faith when they arrive. A wise person will always be ready for something before it comes. Don't allow the challenge to catch you unprepared. Prepare by spending time with the Word of God. Feed on the Word of God until it becomes alive in you. If you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 10. The Word of God is what will give you courage in hard times. Don't neglect the Word of God for anything. Make God's Word your daily bread as it ought to be. The strength of God is already available to you. The only question now is, will you have it? You access God's provision for your life through faith in His Word. When the angel appeared to Gideon, he called him a mighty man of valor. Gideon was hiding from the enemies at the time. Though he doubted God's ability in him at first, he later believed and stepped out on faith. God used the timid Gideon to bring victory to the land. 
Gideon decided to step out in faith and confront his enemies. You have been hiding from those enemies for too long. Step out in faith. Believe what God says about you. God has never called you a weakling. In God's eyes, you're strong because He is with you. Fear is a result of what you know and what you do not know. You're afraid because you know your problems are real. Fear has eaten deep into your life because you know people who had the same problems you're facing have probably died, run into debt, or faced other terrible things. As a believer, you're afraid because you don't know God's promises to you. You're scared because you don't know that God is with you. In your weakness, God is strong. God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you're too weak to walk the path yourself, God will carry you on His shoulders. God is walking with you and working in you. You don't have to feel it before you believe that God's at work in your life. God will make everything in your life turn out for good. It may look long or delayed in your eyes, but I want you to know God is never late. He'll show up for you at the right time. Ensure that you keep trusting in God's ability to turn the situation around for the good. Have confidence in God. Acknowledge His ability to strengthen you even in the toughest times. Many of us are at the point where we are just waiting for the year to end. It's been a tough one. At least a number of people around me have told me so. It was filled with ups and downs, so many struggles, and at this point, very few people are optimistic that something can happen before the year ends and transform their lives for the better. So, we try again next year. That is what we have resolved to. Perhaps you relate to this. It has been such a long time trying to put your life in order, but everything has just been heading south. Your plans never materialize, and every time you end up in a worse state, you feel so downtrodden and helpless, like there's just no more fight in you. This is why I have come in to tell you that you do not need to fight. The reason you are feeling so exhausted is you have been trying to plan your life on your own. You left God out of the picture. And as His child, this should not be the case. God doesn't want to be a third wheel in our lives. He should be the priority. The kind of friend who when they say they are not going to an event, you don't either. And when they pass by your house and tell you to hop in the car, you do not ask where you're going. However, in our spirit of self-sufficiency and independence, we tend to sideline God. We take over His place in our lives. We start to fight battles that were none of our business in the first place. We push God farther and farther away until He has no choice but to let us stray as far as we will. This never ends well. Life is not yours to do alone. God wants to be with you each and every step. He wants to be your companion, friend, comforter, and a shoulder to lean on. He wants to be the one fighting your battles for you. It's His work, not yours. Your only duty is to trust Him and let Him do His thing. There is no way to avoid the troubles of life. As long as we are here, they will always be there. The Bible says in John 16, that in this world, we will face troubles. This means that challenges of all kinds will find their way into your life. However, as a child of God, you should not despair or feel helpless. God will always fight your battles. He always has and always will. He has proven to be faithful throughout Scripture, through several men like Joshua, Elijah, King David, and King Josiah. There is one who has a particularly fascinating narrative about choosing to trust and worship in the face of overwhelming odds, that is, King Jehoshaphat, king of the southern side of Judah. This particular story about Jehoshaphat is told in 2 Chronicles 20. King Jehoshaphat is surrounded by three vast armies and a war is looming. 
The impending invasion and destruction of his kingdom threatens him. But his response to this is very fascinating. Instead of gathering together all his army men and getting ready for war, this king gathers all his people together to pray and worship the Lord. He humbles himself in prayer and cries out to God, telling him about the difficulty they are about to endure from the surrounding nations. And then he says this in verse 12, O our God, will you not execute judgment on them? For we are powerless against this great horde that is coming against us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. ESV. What faith in God? How many times do you acknowledge that you do not know what to do, but your eyes are on the Lord? How many times when you're in difficulty do you look up to the Lord to help you? Many times we are so intent on saving ourselves that we forget about the existence of God in our lives. We are so filled with the me, myself and I mentality that God no longer has the opportunity to reveal his power through us. This is not what Jehoshaphat does. He could have gathered his men for war or even looked for help from the allies he had among the surrounding nations. But instead, he chose to seek the help of God. God responds to Jehoshaphat by speaking through one of the Levites present in the gathering, saying, Thus says the Lord to you, Do not be afraid, and do not be dismayed at this great horde, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Verse 15, ESV What a relief to know that God is fighting for us. We need not gather our armies. We need not seek the help of our friends, train endlessly, getting ready for the upcoming war, or even fight it, because it's not our battle, but the Lord's. The people of Judah devoted their energy to worshiping the Lord, and in return, he fought the battle for them. When they went to the battleground, they were met by an incredible sight. Verse 24 says, When Judah came to the watchtower of the wilderness, they looked toward the horde, and behold, there were dead bodies lying on the ground. None had escaped. While the people of God were worshiping him, he set out against the three armies, turning them against one another so that they fought and killed each other. By the time the people of God arrived, there was no battle left to fight. It was finished. God had won. We will find ourselves in many battlegrounds in this life. Perhaps when you became born again, you hoped that it was the end of your suffering. Perhaps you thought that now that you were a child of God, no one would touch you. You had suffered so much in the hands of the world, and now you could not wait to relax and rest in the Lord. This had to be the mentality that the Israelites had when Moses rescued them from bondage in Egypt, that the end to their painful existence had come, and now it was the time to rest and lavish in the land of milk and honey. But when we read the books that tell the history of the Israelites, you will notice that promise was far from near. It was now time for the real war. In fact, the first thing they had to do was gather their army and go to war against the city of Jericho, then the city of Ai, and then one by one, they fought all the other cities of Canaan. This happens to us as well. We come into the Lord to rest, but sooner or later, we realize that the Christian life is not a playground, but a battleground. We are attacked endlessly from all fronts. We do not fight each other or our fellow believers, but against Satan, the grip he has on the people all around us and his attempts to try to defeat us and our efforts to build God's kingdom. In Ephesians 6.12, Paul writes, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. The contemporary English version says, 
We are not fighting against humans. We are fighting against forces and authorities and against rulers of darkness and powers in the spiritual world. When you study the scripture, you will realize that this is a war that has been ongoing for generations, the opposition between good and evil. It has been there from the beginning of time. Even though sometimes we will ultimately be drawn into this fight, we must not forget that the battles belong to the Lord. It's His to fight, and the victory is already His. Jesus Christ triumphed over sin and the powers of darkness when He died and rose, conquering Satan and all his works. God has your back in all battles, whether they manifest in your job or family, or whether it's battles against temptation, thoughts of worry and depression, mental or physical health, or spiritual ones. He is on the battleground, not as a spectator, but as the one on the front line. He is fighting for you. This battle is his to fight and win. Whatever difficulty or struggle you are experiencing in life, you have a choice at all times to react in fear or run. You can choose to do everything within your own power to take care of your situation and try to keep it under your control, or you can pack up and leave, running away and staying far ahead of the danger. You can freeze up and be overrun by the evil that sits before you, or you could lift your eyes and hands to heaven in the battle and worship God knowing that He is fighting for you. You can rest in the assurance that He has overcome the world and all its evil. You can choose to keep your hope in the Lord, knowing that He is greater than anything you can ever face in this life. There is no challenge in your life that is too big or too small for Him to handle. He has a way out for each and every thing that could be troubling you. Jesus Christ has already decisively won the battle on the cross. However, we must still continue to resist the enemy and all his schemes. Even though we do so, we must always remember that we are fighting an enemy who has already been defeated. As soon as Christ's nail-pierced resurrected feet touched the earth outside the tomb, he secured a victory over sin and death for all of us and we are assured of a day when he will come again and put an end to all of this. He will put our enemies under his feet, overcoming them forever, and the dust of this battle will settle, and we will be welcome to a renewed and peaceful world. Until then, we must strive to flee from all evil. Even though this battle is not our own, we are involved in it by virtue of being the children of the light. We are greatly impacted, but are not to feel defeated because God will never send us to battle alone. He is always with us, fighting for and with us. God is the Lord of heavenly armies who fights for his people. He is a warrior who fought for his people in the days of King Jehoshaphat and he still fights for his people because his faithful love endures forever. He is enthroned upon our praises, and his power and wisdom are as close as our prayers. All the battles in our lives belong to him. We live in a day and age where everyone is in a hurry. Life has become so full of activities that there's hardly any time to pause. We want everything fast fast food, fast turnaround times, fast cues, etc. We even have our meals on the go. Fast is the order of the day. Very few people are willing to stick with things until maturity anymore. Everyone wants to be at the top of their career immediately. If this attitude was only found in the world, it wouldn't be so concerning. Unfortunately, we now have a lot of fast food Christians. They want everything done in their lives in seconds. They want to grow spiritually, walk in the anointing, and do exploits for God immediately. They want to know everything there is to know about God in one day. 
They're not ready to build intimacy with God or spend time with Him. They want to have everything at the snap of their fingers without having to do anything. Microwave believers are only happy and actively following the will of God when things in their lives are going well. When they don't get what they want or the answer to their prayer seems delayed, they become discouraged and start doubting the power of God. The problem with these kinds of people is that they'll never be able to experience the fullness of Christ. They must come out of their impatient state and fully surrender to God before they experience His fullness. The children of Israel were like that, fond of turning their backs on God in the face of any difficulty. When Moses delayed before coming down from the mountain, they made a golden calf to worship. They were always after instant manifestation and satisfaction. When they faced difficulties, they were quick to murmur against Moses and God. The Christian life doesn't work that way, and neither does the natural life. Everything relevant and worthwhile takes time to grow. Look at the flowers. They bloom today, and tomorrow they wither away. But the trees that take years to grow to maturity remain strong for years. It takes time to become a true disciple. Just as a child doesn't become an adult in a day, you can't become a spiritual giant in one day. You need time to learn God's ways and to apply them in your life. Grow in intimacy with Him and continually depend on Him as you love Him daily. Psalm 27 verse 14 says, Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. The impatient nature of people makes them unwilling to follow the due process to get anything. This fast nature has been the downfall of many who have been preyed on by scammers. Multitudes have lost their money to get-rich-quick schemes. Jesus promised the Holy Spirit to the believers before He left the earth physically. He told them to wait in Jerusalem until they had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. My emphasis is on the word wait. Why did He not just give Him the power immediately? Why did they have to wait for the Holy Spirit? It wasn't just for one or two days. They had to wait for many days. The Word tells us that there is a right time for everything. There were still some things that needed to be put into place before they could carry the awesome power of God. I'm sure that as they waited in prayer in the upper room, God was doing a work in them in order to work through them. We must learn that anything worthwhile requires time and due process to be perfect. Imagine if some people got tired of waiting and left the upper room. How disappointed would they be to learn that they had missed out on the outpouring of the Holy Spirit? Yet many believers are missing out on the blessings of God. They get tired of waiting or distracted by other things and miss out on God's blessings for them. Waiting is part and parcel of our human experience. Not even believers are exempt. There are some things we'll have to wait on. Learn to be still before God. Never be in a hurry to leave His presence. Even when you approach Him in prayer, it doesn't mean that God doesn't answer quick prayers, but you will miss out on God's best if you're always in a hurry to leave His presence. Psalm chapter 46, verse 10a, God says, Be still and know that I am God. If you're still caught up in the rat race of impatience, you may miss out on what God has for you. God wants you to be blessed. He wants you to have everything that pertains to life and godliness. He wants your health to flourish and for you to get the job you've been praying for. There's no doubt God's plans for you are good. The question is, when does He want you to have those things? At your time or at His time? They are His will for you. And since they're His will, they'll have to follow His timing. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 11 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart, yet no one can fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Some believers go to the extent of giving God an ultimatum. They say things like, If you don't answer me by the end of this month, I'll stop paying my tithe. Or if I don't get what I'm asking for by the end of this year, then you're not the true God. God's faithfulness is not dependent on what we say. His nature is faithfulness. Serving God is for your benefit. Your devotion to God does you good, not the other way around. Quitting your service to God when facing hard times shows a lack of spiritual maturity. You can't force God into doing your will. 
continue trusting God. The next time you pray for something and you don't receive an immediate answer, keep your peace and trust His timing. Continue praying about it with trust in your heart that at the right time, He will make everything perfect for you. Impatience makes people miss out on God's perfect plan for their lives. The devil often presents alternatives to impatient believers that take them away from God's will. Don't let this happen to you. Keep holding on to the Word of God. Build up your faith in God. Declare just like Job, though he slay me, yet I will praise him. Be ready to remain faithful to God even when you don't have everything you're praying for. That is what distinguishes a true believer from a flaky one. As you pray, God sees how your present, past, and future can be worked together for your good. You only see the present with your limited intellect. You might not be getting an answer to your heartfelt prayer because God has a better plan for you. True believers will stay with God and trust Him until they see what He's preparing for them. The microwave believers aren't willing to wait and try to do things their way. They would walk out on God while He's perfecting what concerns them. This behavior is the cause of most people's frustration. They never see their faith through. God lives and operates in eternity. Time has no power over Him or His Word. The Word says a day in God's eyes is equivalent to a thousand years for man. Do you now see that God hasn't abandoned you? He has been and will remain faithful to you. Let's look at the example of Lazarus. He was Jesus' friend and loved dearly by the Savior. He got sick and his sisters contacted Jesus. They were sure if Jesus came, Lazarus would be healed. However, Jesus didn't go immediately. By the time he went, Lazarus was dead and already buried. In the eyes of Mary and Martha, Jesus was too late. They both believed he should have come sooner to heal their brother. Jesus asked to go to Lazarus' tomb. He stood at the tomb and called out to Lazarus. The dead man walked out of his grave alive. The news of his resurrection made many people believe in Jesus. From a human perspective, Jesus was four days late. From God's timing, Jesus was right on time. The healing of Lazarus would have been wonderful for the family, but his resurrection caused many people to believe in Jesus. It was a greater miracle. God sees the bigger picture. When you wait on God, you will experience greater glory. The life of Lazarus had greater impact because Jesus came in at the right time and not the time the sisters wanted or expected. Let God step into your life in His own time. Give Him the chance and space to do everything He's promised to do for you. God is never late. He's always right on time. You're the one who's impatient and not ready to stay with God through the process. Impatience hasn't done anyone any good. It only robs people of their benefits and the joy of answered prayer. A mature believer will remain steadfast even in the waiting season. They won't stop praying. They'll keep believing that God is faithful to His promises. Make up your mind to stay with God as He makes everything in your life beautiful. You can't rush God, but you can trust Him. Choose to trust God above other things and you'll experience greater glory and joy in your life. I remember my days back in high school, specifically my history classes. There used to be some questions that had universal answers. At least that's what we used to call them. Because such answers always seem to be relevant or rather correct in many instances. Points like insufficient funds and competition from other organizations Recently, a friend was telling me how he wished he had those universal answers in college. Nowadays, we have to deal with, in his words, a lot of stuff. The word stuff is so common. What are you doing? Some stuff over here? What did you get from the market? Just some stuff. Can you help me do some stuff over here? I'm dealing with a lot of stuff currently. But what exactly is the stuff that has found its way even into our relationships with God. Where exactly am I headed with this? I'm talking about faith. Just a quick examination. Do you think you're at a point in your life where you're trusting God as you should? Are you confident that your faith is at the level God would like it to be? Or is it falling short? Well, 
Many times we found ourselves limiting our faith. We did not reach the optimum levels of faith that God wants. The reason? A lot of stuff. So what is the baggage that takes up the place of faith in our lives? While every person's experience and journey with God is different, we have some universal points as well. Today we will be learning what these universal hindrances to the growth of our faith are and see how we can let go of them so that our faith in God may grow. Top in the list is number one, doubt. Hebrews 11.1 1 gives the biblical definition of faith. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. On the other hand, doubt, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is the feeling of uncertainty or lack of conviction. You notice that these two are opposites. Doubt is the opposite of confident faith, while faith is the biblical opposite of doubt, and they are inversely proportional. When doubt becomes so frequent a feeling in your life, your faith stops growing. Doubt and faith can certainly coexist, but it seems that the more doubt you have, the less room there is for faith. But let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for the one who doubts is like the wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. James 1.6 Doubting will harm your faith. It will weaken your spiritual stance and leave you lacking stability in life. And when you are not in that peaceful and calm state of heart, it is hard to grow your faith. You are to let go of your doubts if your faith must grow. And the way to cast away your doubts is by feeding yourself with the Word of God. Anytime you feel doubtful, review the promises of God in the Bible. Then look back at your life, particularly at those times when God showed up for you. Remind yourself that God has not changed. As He was then, so He is now. If He did it for you that one time, then He will certainly do it for you again. 2. Fear Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Mark 4.40 Fear stems from many things. It could be fear resulting from past experiences that cause you pain. It could be fear of the future or some form of anxiety. Maybe God has called you to a greater task and you're afraid because you have no idea how you will manage or you're afraid of the growth you're supposed to undergo. Whatever it is, fear speaks of a lack of faith on our side. It shows that we are not trusting God in whatever he's instructing us to do. Whether we have been hurt before or whether we have no idea how to carry out the task that God has assigned us, he expects us to move forward by faith. Besides, it is not for us to understand how everything will work out. But we have to be courageous and bold in him, even in times when we cannot see what he is doing. When we immerse ourselves fully into God, with passionate courage and boldness, it shows how strong our faith is in Him, in response to the faith we already have. God gives us the power and ability to do what He wants us to do, as well as more faith, and trusting us with even greater missions. Having courage is believing that God is greater than everything and everyone around us, believing that there is no circumstance, no challenge, and no obstacle that can stand in the way of the Lord. To let go of the fear that could be hindering your growth in the Lord, you have to pinpoint exactly what it is that makes you afraid and then encounter it with scripture. If it is a past failure, remind yourself that the old has gone and the new has come. If it is a certain situation that keeps troubling you, keep in mind that the Lord is always with you. If it is anxiety about the future, remind yourself of the scripture that says that God works all things out for the good of those who believe in him. Many things are bound to make us fearful, marriage, school, parenting, and finances. But the Bible reminds us that the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but one of courage. 2 Timothy 1.7 3. Control and or self-sufficiency Honestly, having your stuff together is among the best feelings ever. Your health is in check, your finances and your grades are good. Affording some relaxed evening in the spa, that feeling of everything being within your control is ecstatic. We spend so much of our time trying to get our lives to this point 
And in the process, we forget that it's impossible to have absolute control of our lives. When we get too invested in having our stuff in check, we are likely to lock God out of the equation. We use our wits, material means, intellectual prowess, and physical strength to bring order in our lives, whereas sometimes we need more. We need the favor of God. We need Him to approve our plans and show us the right path to follow. And we can only do it if we let Him take control. We need to hand over the keys to Him and let Him drive us to whatever place He wants. We need to stop trying so hard to be our saviors or fix our problems in our lives and let God do it. It is the way we can achieve tranquility of life that nothing and no one else can offer but God. And letting God take over can only happen if we have faith in Him. If we trust that He is able and willing to do for us what is best according to His will. Unless we have this faith in the Lord, we will spend a great deal of our time and energy trying to order our lives, which we may never achieve. But letting go and letting God take control builds our faith, grows our confidence, and increases our trust in Him. 4. Trusting the Physical What are you thinking right now? For us, the young generation in our early adult years, we are constantly thinking about money. We want to become rich at the youngest age we can. Sometimes it's so bad we end up depressed because when we look around, we see the hardships and not the possibilities. We forget that God can give on to us whatever we ask Him by faith. We see challenges and obstacles and not a God who can move mountains for us. This makes us less confident in the Lord and its eventual effect can be causing us to falter in our faith and fall off our salvation. You have your things that could be worrying you, situations that are blurring your vision of God because of how hopeless they look. But if we want our faith in God to grow, we must shift our focus and say, even though this is what I see now, I know that the Lord has great plans for me. For I wish I had this to God. I thank you for providing me with this in advance. We need to change our perspective and see life as a gradual process and not as an instant thing. This will not only help us trust in the Lord more, but it will be a way of remaining faithful to God even when the waiting is too long. Instead of responding with complaints when you don't get your own desired answer, you should be assured that He is faithful enough to grant all the desires of your heart in His own time. 5. In Action Faith without work is dead. James 2.26 A well-known old phrase says the practice makes perfect. None of us are born knowing everything. Almost everything that we know right now is a result of learning. We see, we try, fail, try again, fail, some people as many as 999 times, until someday we get it right. There is no perfection without practice. Behind the sweet victory of athletes we watch on TV, behind the breathtaking arguments of lawyers in court proceedings, behind the eloquent news anchoring of media personalities is a lot of practice that these people put in. I'm sure even yourself has something you have perfected over the years through practice. You were not as good at your job right now as you were when you were first hired. The excellent results are a result of continuous learning and application and endless trials. This is the same with our faith. We cannot grow it if we are not using it. Our faith is demonstrated by our actions, and in the same way, our actions depict whether we have faith or not. Do not wait to trust God with the big things. All prayers are the same before Him. He doesn't answer just the big prayers. It ignores the small ones. Practice your faith in literally everything in your life, even if it's as trivial as hoping that tomorrow it will be sunny. Stretch your faith so that by its continuous use, just like a muscle gains strength from use, it will grow and be strong. Stop being a dormant believer. Like the man from the Gospels, we cry out, I believe, help my unbelief. The struggle of faith is something we all deal with and experience firsthand, but we are a people who hope in the Almighty God, and it's through our faith that we overcome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world, 
And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. 